Shalom Aleichem, dear Hebra. We are in Purim, Baruch Hashem. Right, Yehuda? Oh, yeah. No time like the present to get ready for the biggest day of the year. One Purim can change your life forever. If you do Purim properly, you can change your life forever. To never be the same old guy ever again. To see the world with totally fresh, pure eyes. So yesterday we began with the introduction and we're continuing to plow along in our journey towards Adalo Yada of Machayv Inish Lebesume Bepuraya Adalo Yada Ben Orahama Leboruch Mordechai A person is obligated to get spicy on Purim. Yes, spicy, spiced. Spiced on Purim. Add the lo yada until you don't know. Chayiv. Lusty means happy. That, yeah. Spice, spicy means spiced, fragrant, perfumed, labadik, happy. You want to get to that place, and we have to get to that place on Purim. And by the way, it doesn't come by looking at Purim as just some type of a. as some glorified Torah frat party. May the Lord save us from that perspective. That's why we're taking this time to prepare for it. Who else spends two months getting ready for one day of using wine in a healthy way? With Kedusha, with holiness. And specifically that we're learning about the deepest part of the day, which is called Netzach, which is called the power to overcome and be victorious, just like Mordechai, lo yichrovi, lo yishtachave. he did not bend, he did not bow to the evil Haman, and instead of moving to another area where Haman would not go and walk in his path, he specifically went right where Haman would be walking, and when Haman would get there and he would see this Jew refusing to bow down to him, with a tremendous akshanus. He said, I'm not bowing to a fake idol like you. And the world said, oh my goodness, how could he do that? He must really believe in God. And rever reverberations went out around the kingdom. There's a man who believes in God. So there's a man who's a God, God, God. And it's time of God. There's such a thing in the world. Everyone's tweeting, God, did you see what he did? Out of fear of maybe being killed, God. That he made God number one. And then, of course, in the end, who won? La Yehudi Maisa Oyer Vesimcha Vesas and Vikar. Cain Tialana, we're still dancing until this very day. And Haman's sons are hung on the gallows. And we'll talk about the ten Nazis that were hung on the gallows also. Purim is the holiday that lasts forever, Chazal say. All the other holidays are going to be bottle, which means compared to Purim, they're going to be like nothing. And Purim is going to be the one holiday we still celebrate forever. Because all of Purim is Megal the Hester. That Hashem is not really hiding. It only looks like He's hiding, but He's right here. And that understanding, we're going to be understanding deeper for all eternity. So we're on the second page here, the introduction. And we're speaking about the power of Netzach and the power that I know that Hashem, you are operating through me. That's what gives somebody like Mordechai the holy chutzpah to sit there when Haman's about to walk and potentially end his life right then and there. <speaking in Hebrew> Even though on the outside it looks like Mordechai, he was the, wow, he's so religious and so righteous, Mordechai. You're amazing, man. He's so good at defending the faith. It looks like he did it. 
Hu yuchal lizkar olahargish shakol rak b'koyach Hashem. The same time that it looks like that we do everything ourselves, at that same moment we could realize that it's God that's infusing me with everything that I have. We are God's servants. God is moving through us. God is enlivening us. Anybody who learns Shara Yichad Ve'emuni from the Balatanya, the second Sefer, the Tanya, it is wondrous description of how God and the creation, it's all one thing. Azai Adarab. And then what happens? Adarab, you know, Adarab is the word Adarba. Adarab, the opposite. Adarab, the opposite. Adarba, when everything gets flipped over. Vinahapach. Koyach Akshonus Vanitsa, the power of standing up and being victorious. We think that to be victorious means I will do this thing. That's not really where being victorious comes from. It comes from a crystal clear understanding that God is doing everything. That's what gives me the power to stand up against that evil. You could never do such a thing. Mordechai, he didn't have the power to stand up to Haman. Everyone said he's crazy. You're being so irresponsible. What gave him the koyach to stand up to all that evil? He realized it's not me doing it. God asked that somebody should stand up against evil tyranny and the evil of the world, so somebody has to do it. I guess God has given me the ability to do it. That's what lets you have the power. From Hashem's power. When you realize that God is the one that's giving you the power, you could do anything. Because you're just a shaliach of Hashem. You could do anything. Could do anything. I'll share, share a very personal thing. I used to not be the best person at waking up in the morning. In fact, probably for the first 25 years of my life, I was, uh, it wasn't uncommon to say, you know, good morning to people at four o'clock in the afternoon. It's funny because if you ever told me good morning, if you did four o'clock in the afternoon, it's like you just reminded me of, you know, like, a light, like you know, another reincarnation or something. And I remember coming to yeshiva and realizing that the next morning, like, I remember coming here and having shah, like having, uh, getting ready for breakfast and realizing everyone was in synagogue praying. And I remember asking, like, is it like a holiday today? Like, what's everyone doing here? Like, you know, like Rosh Hashanah, everyone goes to shul. They're like, yeah, it's, you know, like, they're, they're davening. So, okay. Next day, I come, you know, breakfast. I want to be early. Make sure I got the cottage cheese. A whole one to myself. And sure enough, everyone's in synagogue. Like, it's a holiday again? Like, what's going on here? Third day? Like, what, what was it, like, the Passover, Sarah? Like, what, what is it, seven days right now? And they said, they said no, they do that every day. They said, every day is a holiday? I remember saying, every day is a holiday, you get up every day? Except like probably Sunday, right? Sunday's a day. No, even Sunday. I said, what? Even Sunday? And I remember thinking, the words went through my mind, a yid never has a day off. It's a crazy thing. A yid, when that like clicked in my head, a yid never has a musug of a day off. But even there, even the tefillin doesn't have a day off because Shabbos is the os, is the tefillin. It, it, there's another thing in place of it. And that's why they say Shabbos is Rosh Tevis, is an acronym, is strimal bim kaim tefillin. <laughs> that the strimal is in place of the tefillin. So even on Shabbos you're putting on your tefillin, but the strimal pasha. So the whole inyan, the whole musug, the whole idea of like, yeah, 
I'm just going to have like a day that I just, I wake up whenever the, you know, whenever the, whenever it, it, it comes to me that I should arise, you know, that type of stuff. Like, and the answer is no, you got to wake up, there's stuff to do. So for a, somebody that never woke up early, it's, not, it's almost not possible. It's very, very hard to change that as a habit. Very hard. And I remember thinking, basically, Purim Dick, what we're talking about now, which is if God said to do it, then it's not even me doing it. God said to do it. So you're right, I can't do this by myself. But with God doing it, I can do anything. You hear that? I can't do this by myself. But with God helping me, I can do this. It's the same thing with addictions. And that's why the 12-step program is so powerful and has many Jewish and Torah values in it. Because there is a step of acknowledging, I can't do this by myself, only if there's a higher power. God, you know, we'll just say what it is, helping me to overcome this. That's what he's talking about here. There's, I have to do my responsibility to get up. But I realize, I can't do this. But if God can do it, I have to try that it's coming that God is helping me to do it. Here's where you blend. There's the me in this world and the God that's moving through me. And they become one thing. This is one of the secrets of all of life, is getting this clear. In this level, on the outside, I do my part. Nevertheless, I never forget the truth. I know with complete clarity that it's only coming because Hashem has helped me to do it. It's a much higher level than saying, I don't do anything, I don't do anything, I don't do it. God, the Lord is moving through me. The Lord, it's all the Lord. It, I didn't do anything. It's actually a higher <coughs> level of unification of God and the creation. Hear this well. When you are doing something, there is a you. But you doing it are recognizing that it's God moving through you. You hear how there's a unification there? As opposed to, I'm nothing, I'm nobody, ich bin a gornish, I don't do anything, it's only God. Somebody says, how are you doing today? Nothing, nobody, I'm a shmata, it's all God, it's all God. That's not the Yiddish way. The Yiddish way is, how are you doing? Bo Hashem, doing great. Why do you look so good? Because Hashem is inside of me. How could I not be good? I am good, and I am doing. Don't you notice the Torah, Yidin, we produce, and move, and do, and wake up early, and are labadic, and don't rest until the job is completed. But for one second, we can't forget that it's only because God is moving through us, helping us. Mordechai can only sit there in front of the evil Haman, because he realized that I cannot do this by myself. Only because God is moving through me. Do you think Abraham could stand up to the whole world? The whole world says that paganism is in. Paganism is where it's at. Worshipping the devil is where it's at. Come on, Abe, join us. Could you imagine one human being saying that God is one? The whole world saying, come on, give up on your fantasy. Just join the social narrative. Come on, Avram. And he said, I know what the truth is. And against all of humanity, Avram Ivri means he was me'aver hayam. He was standing on the other side of the river. He could only do that because he knew that God was inside of him, helping him. Kiba Madrega Zu. When you get to this level where it's you working with Hashem together, Madrega Sanetzach, Hamesukin, when that power of victory is very, very strong inside of you, 
אז לא שאין נברא בכלל, אלא אין נברא כדובר עצמי, אבל יש נברא ככלי לגילוי האור העליון. You become a vessel to receive God's light. בלי עצמיוס המסתיר את האמס. אה, so beautiful. Generally, if it's a big me, I'm the man, then you become this very thick vessel that conceals the light that's within. But if you all of a sudden make your vessel more luminescent, then you allow the light within you to shine forth into the world. Your body can be like a window where the sun is shining from one side of the window. That's your neshama, that's God. shining inside of you. But if the window is muddy and dirty, then you don't reveal that light in the world. You're just a muddy window. But if you clean up the window and you, so to speak, move your real thick identity out of the way, then the light of God will shine through you out into the world. You're allowing it to shine out. Ichimai brings a beautiful muscle that... The highest level we get to is that God's light should shine through something that makes it even more beautiful. He brings the mushal of a crystal vase. So when you shine light through a crystal vase, you see that the light becomes beautiful and colorful, more beautiful, if you will, than when the light was seen before it went into the vase. Meaning that Klaal Yisrael are here in the world to reveal the inner light and colors of God's infinite light here in the world. It's so beautiful. We're the crystal vase that brings out color for the world to see. Ube madrega zua odom loi rak mis battle ve nechnas le menucha le kis At this level, a person doesn't just go up to a mountaintop and just say, ah. It's so good. It's so good. And his wife said, when are you coming down? You know, hang out with the kids. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, We don't do that. You can go on trips up to the mountains. It's a very nice thing to do. <laughs> Got to come back down to your wife and kids, though. And the other rabbi, to the contrary, our way is who poil v'shayleach monois v'nois and tzedakah. He's obviously hinting to Purim here. What do we do on Purim? We don't just sit there, you know, rolling our eyes back. You got to do mitzvahs on Purim. You give out money to the poor. You give friends foodstuffs to eat. You're giving out food that you made. Ideally not junk food. Ideally homemade meals. which in halakha, it actually has to be edible. You've got to make a, you know, a pot roast, some brisket, some, some micro-brew, some good stuff, some good yayin, mishloach manas, money to the poor. Up on the mountain, you know, you've got to come down to feed the poor. So Purim is, a, you are involved in this world. You're dancing and singing. The guy on the mountain is like, ah. And someone down is like, lie. And someone comes up the top of the mountain, lie. And he's like, won't you be quiet? Don't you see I'm with God? And he's like, what? Like, you got to get more involved. Like, God's everywhere, bro. On Purim, you realize God is everywhere, especially in the lowest of places. Where the poor need you and your family and everywhere. Avalakol mitay haragasha. שהשם יזברך הוא האויסי אמיתי, ואני כלי שלוי, I love this, these four words are so powerful to me, הוא הכוח שפועל בי. Excuse me, God is the energy, the power that is acting in me, that is moving through me. כוח הפועל בנפל. כי הוא המציאס היחיד ואין עוד, he is the true reality, moving in me. This is the special light that Purim is going to give, them, give us. Shlemes ha-sogus ha-yichud, to have that unification clear. Ad shemer gam es midas ha-netzah shetiyah karoi. Ki 
Ha'ora helakis kol kach hazaka b'yoyim hazeh. The godly light is so strong on this day. Ad shehakol botel lifnei ha'ora elyon. Until that light, it's so obvious. It's what's moving me. Va'anam agim la'ad lo yada. You get to a place where ad lo yada. And we're acting. Meaning, you would have thought that means you're just like lying on a, on a, on a, like on a bed somewhere. Just, ah. Uh. But in fact, no. In Adaloyada, you're doing mitzvahs. And with people. And there's no Isra Malacha. There's no Isra Malacha. It's a very interesting day. The awareness is so strong. The light is so strong, not in a way that you disappear, but on Purim, the light is so strong that you are acting in this world in 100% full, full activation mode, but you know that every ounce of energy is coming from God. That's the absolute clarity. And when a person does that, he has the power of netzach, that he could stand up to any evil. That Haman doesn't stand a chance. And Amalek will be destroyed. He didn't stand any chance. We should mamish be zoich to this. We're going to continue next time inside Purim. We're going to talk about that light of Purim. What is this light that starts coming inside of us? that's already descending down from heaven right now, that all good things need preparation, we need to be mechen ourselves, in order to really receive that light and actually get it, you have to prepare for it, you have to want it. Mitzvah Hashem, let's want it and be zeichet to it. Amen. Amen. Amen.